All right, welcome. This is how to confidently migrate from a classic theme to a block theme. Let's take this away. Um, hi, I'm Sarah Snow. I'm your host today. I'm a Florida resident by weekday, traveler by weekend. I'm a former middle school teacher, so you will see that come out in kind of the bubbliness of how I do things here. Um, I'm a parent and a Sharpay mom, so you will hear tweeting, you will hear barking at some point. Um, yeah, just so you know, um, I love cooking, I love learning languages, I love the ocean, um, and I am a training team contributor slash mad scientist sponsored by Automatic. Ah, here we go. So just to set the norms, um, as I said earlier, this meeting will be recorded and available on learn.wordpress.org. Um, please know this, safe, this space is safe for discussion. Add your thoughts, ask questions, whether out loud or using the chat box. Um, and also, so if you know the answer or even an answer, or you think you might know the answer to a question, feel free to share that in the chat box for sure. Um, we are all learning together today, which means me too. Uh, Catherine taught me a couple of things this morning. Uh, Catherine is my wonderful co-host who keeps this running smoothly. Um, but as always, stay patient and curious. Hiccups happen and we will work through them together. Today, I made my live blog go horribly wrong. So I have since fixed it. And we will talk about how to do that if things go horribly wrong as well. So let's learn. So let's talk about if you're in the right place. Uh, this workshop is right for you if you're familiar with the difference between classic and block themes, um, if you've experimented with the site editor before, um, or if you've switched themes before, even from classic theme to classic theme, that's totally fine. Um, if this doesn't describe you and you're like, what is the site editor? I've never actually played with a block theme. Like, you are still welcome here. Um, do know that we have additional resources that we can provide if you are brand new to block themes, um, but this workshop may move a little fast in real time for you. But you can review this later and we can definitely provide resources if you're, if you're like, whoa, where do I click? What do I do? What are you even doing? So do keep that in mind. So by the end of this workshop, you are going to be able to make a plan to migrate from a classic to a block theme. Um, you'll be able to anticipate some challenges. You'll probably see me working through some of those challenges um, on your existing website when switching between themes. And you're going to learn a couple of popular resources to help you design quickly. So let's get started. I just like to, to get a sense of where we are here, um, just because then I know how fast I can go or how slow I should go. So how familiar are you with block themes? One is, hey, I've never done this before ever. Um, two is, hey, I've experimented a little, maybe a lot with block themes. Three, one or more of my live websites is a block theme. Four, I use block themes and plugins together, in which case, who you're a step above me, I would say I am at a three. Um, and if you design or build black themes for fun or for work, like, welcome, please share your brilliance. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> See a lot of threes here. Perfect. Some fives, some two. Awesome. All right. Okay. So a little bit more of an advanced audience today. Cool. All right. Um, and if at any point you're like, whoa, like, how do I do that thing? If you ask a question in the chat, we can provide some resources on Learn WordPress for you. Um, so let's start. What is a block theme? Super fast review. Uh, block themes are themes that use the site editor, formerly known as the full site editor. Um, and these themes give users a lot more control over how a theme looks and feels without using code. So if you've used WordPress a lot in the past, um, you might know that you need some like additional CSS coding, things like that to like make your logo go from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. And full site editing is a couple clicks of a button. Um, so yeah, that's really exciting. <sighs> so I'm just, I'm curious, what interests you about switching to a block theme? Answer in the chat box. There are no wrong answers here. <sighs> I think for me personally, I really just want a little bit more control over the look and feel of my website. Now, if you saw my <laughs> thing earlier, you can see I am not a designer. I'm really bad at it. So we're going to add a couple more resources in today. Um, but my current classic theme uh, displays in one way and one way only for the most part. So I would like to do something a little different. So let's see what people are saying. Uh, I see some people saying that they find the, the uh, site editor easier to use. Awesome. Oh, we're moving in the right direction. I love that. Um, we want more control over your site. Yes. Um, let's see, the person wants to get rid of themes out there. They're almost slow. Okay. So you want to speed up your site. Maybe full site editing can help with that. 
um, some clients are really excited about block themes. They definitely want to be able to do a little bit more. So that's a really good incentive to learn how to do this. Um, some people are saying that block themes are the future of WordPress because they give more control. Yeah. Uh, so let's see, lighten up the site, save blocks to use over and over. I love that. Work smarter, not harder. More customization. And let's see, you have more flexibility. More mobile responsiveness is a really interesting idea. Oh, I love that. So you have tons of templates at your fingertips here, and we're going to use some of those today. Awesome. So why do people switch themes just in general? That's that's my next question for you. It's not just block themes, but like, why would a client want to switch from theme to theme? Uh, why have you wanted to switch from themes in the past? Like, what, what are your thoughts? So for mine, we're going to be working on a live website of mine, um, birdie.blog, which I love. But the reason that I want to switch is just because as much as I love this, this page, um, I'm finding it now it's a little overwhelming. I want more control over my front page. Like I like a lot of what is on this, but I want to update it so that my, my front page has different sections um, and in a way that gives me more control. So what are some reasons that people switch, not just to block themes, but just theming in general? Why do people switch themes? Um, let's see. To rebrand. Yes. Oh, I get bored with my theme like all the time. <laughs> Clients like to rebrand to keep things looking modern. Um, some classic themes uh, may no longer be supported. Um, so as as themes change, as people you know move in and out of the WordPress space, um, they may no longer support classic themes. So you definitely want to stay current with all of the cool new features that you know WordPress offers since it's always changing, always evolving, always keeping up with tech. Um, so like a good example of that would be mobile themes, right? So once upon a time, 2008, um, <laughs> a theme from 2008 that is no longer supported, no longer updated, probably isn't going to look super great, like on a tablet or a, on a cell phone. So staying current with technology is huge. Um, and staying current with trends. Yeah. Um, a lot of people say the old way is going away. I don't know that classic themes will ever fully go away. Um, there are, there's a lot to be said about how quickly you can get started, the simplicity of it all. Um, and just, just knowing that, Hey, I just have to focus on my posts, my pages, my media, that can be really attractive and appealing for sure. Um, so yeah, we definitely want to stay current. Um, Laura had a really good point. It helps with security to have a theme that updates. Fun fact about block themes, um, because they use so little, I think it's PHP coding, they tend to be a lot more secure right out of the box. So that makes it a lot easier to design them. That makes it a lot easier to use them and, and have a lot of confidence there. So that's a great answer. Awesome. Let's keep going. So when you change a theme, what content stays? So if I'm looking at my birdie blog here, if I change my theme, what's going to stay? What's going to go? So this is currently on wordpress.com. We're going to be using a different editor today, but just to orient you a little bit, anything that I've ever written in posts um, will stay if I switch themes. Um, any images that I use will absolutely stay as well. Um, any pages that I have written stay, any comments, just the way that posts, media, pages, comments, all of that displays, that's what changes. So that's one thing to keep in mind um, as we switch. Um, and Catherine, if you can remind me when I go to the site editor to talk about this again, that would be awesome because this is a very important point that I want to make about not writing content in the site editor because that's how you lose content. <laughs> so your posts stay, your pages stay, your media files. Um, the idea of changing themes is really about the look, the feel of your site. Um, someone asked in Meetup uh, as a question like, hey, what's one question you have? Like, what, what if all of my uh, posts are written using the classic editor? Um, that content stays as well, um, but you may need to uh, install a plugin for this. So the plugin that I use that allows me to access that um, is the Jetpack plugin, but you can also just use the, mm -hmm, what is it? The classic block editor. I think, oh, I have to get out of here. Let's try this again. <laughs> 
So if you have a lot of content, you haven't built it with blocks, you're really, you know, the site is as old as mine as my site was started in 2015. So yeah, I use the classic editor a lot. Um, this enables you to keep that classic editor and use it just as a simple block, I believe. So if I'm, I could I, be wrong. Oh, go ahead. So, Kevin. okay. I just want to clarify what, what um, activating that plugin actually does is it disables the block editor entirely. Oh, entirely? oh don't yeah. do that then. So, oh, I'm so yeah, glad I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't do well, I wouldn't do that with a with the block theme because you'll okay. Be let me stuck. go to one of my let me go to one of my old ones. Uh, just view, edit. But you're, hold on. If, hold on, if I'll show post, you. If a post is written in the classic editor before, yeah, it'll just automatically get the classic block. Oh. Like that. And if you okay. click on that that bar, that little gray bar, mm -hmm. you can even convert it to blocks right there if you want to use blocks mm -hmm. on one basis. Yes. Someone yeah. was just concerned, like what would happen to it? It doesn't convert unless you do that. Okay. For mm -hmm. some reason, I thought you might need to install a plugin for that. I guess I'm wrong. That's just built in. Oh, that's why the people developing WordPress are smarter than I am. I love it. So I can convert this to blocks if I want. You can see what this looks like there. Um, it's pretty close, but now, as you can see, it's using blocks instead of that classic editor. So that is really just good to know. All right, we're going to go back. We're going to leave this. I'm not going to update that right now. Um, so let's continue. So with this, I, I had to write out my plan because as I updated this for the second reading of this today, I realized I was kind of getting caught in the weeds again myself. So I decided to make a plan and I recommend this for everybody. Um, so you want to decide, do you want to... Um, try and emulate the look and feel of an old theme? Do you want to update entirely? So for me, in order to keep it relatively simple, we'll we'll see, um, I want to switch to a block theme, but keep a similar look and feel, but with added functionality so that my front page isn't just blog post, blog post, blog post, blog post. Like I really want to make sure that I have a little bit more control of that. Um, I'm also going to keep it simple. Uh, I have a tendency to try and recreate the wheel. Uh, other designers are much better at it than I am. So I'm going to use some patterns today rather than building something from the ground up. Um, and I am going to be using, what is it? A, a, a new host. So you may have noticed um, I was, I was over here, wordpress.com. That was my original host. Um, today I have migrated most of my themes. Instead, I'm using a new host. So you can see birdieblog.mystagingwebsite.com. This is a test sandbox that I have set up. Um, yeah, so that that's, yeah, we'll, we'll get there in just a quick second. So once it's done, I'm going to just switch over from wordpress.com to Pressable, though you can use any WordPress host you would like. You can use Bluehost or GoDaddy or SiteGround or WP Engine, whatever one works for you. Um, you may be tempted to update your live site uh, <laughs> right there uh, on your current host if you don't have another test sandbox the way that I do. Um, so if you choose to do that, that is not what I recommend, but you can. What is the very first thing that you should do before making any enormous changes to your website? And as far as the custom fields uh, question goes, I'm going to save that for the end uh, if we have time. Yes, everyone is saying back up, back up. One person suggested a way of, of handling that, but backing up is the way to go. Um, so my original plan for this had been to use a backup plugin. So Vivid WP backups, all in one jetpack. And I was going to make a copy of my website and migrate it to a local installation or a pressable. Um, so I was gonna move that over so that I had a separate place entirely. And I was going to show you the absolute safest way to move to a block theme. And this, this is what I advocate for doing is making a copy of your website, moving it somewhere else, um, and then making the changes there. Um, because what I was doing was editing uh, birdie.blog live over here, and uh, it was not pretty and did not go well. So um, I had I, the reason that I bring this up is because it's really important to see that this is not, there's not one way to do this and that it's normal to, even if you are very familiar with block themes, even if, you know, you, you teach this stuff uh, for, for a living or for fun, um, there are times when things don't go exactly according to plan and that's okay. So just knowing that, hey, I've got a solid backup. I can completely change my website back to uh, the way it looked originally. 
that's an A plus thing. Step one, always make a backup, maybe make a copy. Um, let's see. So my new plan, as I said, I'm going to use the second sandbox site. Today I'm using Pressable because it allows me to have multiple different websites under one account, which is really, really handy. Um, I'm going to leave my live website untouched. So every single thing you see me doing isn't going to show up on birdie.blog until I'm ready. And when I am ready, when I have made that, um, I am then going to point birdie.blog, my domain name, to the new site when I'm finished tinkering. So that is one way to make sure with utter confidence that your website is 100% ready to go before you make that change. So now I have two step twos. The next thing that we're going to do once I've made my copy is we are going to structure our site and we're going to do that in our site editor. So I'm going to start by creating a header template part, a footer template part. I'm going to skip the sidebar for today um, and I'm going to quickly make some templates. So I'm going to make my index template, my single one for my post page, uh, my pages pages, and then one maybe for categories. I think I might skip that step for today just for the sake of time. So should put these in a different order. <laughs> so I'm going to go over here to my sandbox dashboard over here. And I'm going to show you what that looks like to start. Um, so you can see I have recreated this website. Um, it's not exactly the same. Um, some of my content did not move over. Again, totally normal to have a couple of things maybe not <laughs> transfer, which is why we're not doing it on the live site. Um, but you can really get a sense of what this website looks like um, using that theme. So now my job is going to be to switch to a block theme. And you're going to see what that looks like, what it does to everything, to the look and feel of it. Um, so I'm probably going to use, I think I might use 2023 today, just because my goal is to try and give it the same look and feel. If you wanted to add a block theme, if you were trying to do something brand new, if you click on add new, there's a new block themes button here, which is super helpful. You can definitely scan to look for something that appeals to you, something new, something pretty. I was very, very tempted to use one that had like a bird on it already. <laughs> I don't know if it's in this list right now, um, but yeah, there it was. This one's super pretty, but because I don't know it as well, I'm going to stick to the general 2023 theme. So I've already added that to my themes here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to activate it and it's going to move from a classic to a block theme. It's active. Let's see what this looks like now. All right. This looks quite a bit different. This looks quite a bit different here. So you'll see that my live website here hasn't changed because I'm playing in a sandbox. So I'm now going to head to my site editor. So I can either press this edit site button or I can go to my dashboard and click on editor from appearance here. And that's going to take me to my templates. <laughs> so I always recommend framing your website for second and third. Um, I like to put the top and like I like to put the hat on and the shoes on and then do everything else. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to start by heading to my template parts. Looks like there is already a header and a footer comments post meta. My header currently looks like this, which looks absolutely nothing like my birdie.blog header. Now, Earlier today, I was like, I'm going to try and emulate this. And let me tell you, that took a long time and did not go as well as I hoped. So instead, we're going to use a pattern, uh, a little, little bit of a cheat code here to use the brain power, the open source. You are welcome to use brain power of other designers. Um, so if you head to wordpress.org and then go to this patterns, there are hundreds of patterns that have been created for you to use um, that can get you up and running really, really quickly. Um, so I can search for header patterns and look for something uh, of these 50 patterns that exist that closely emulates this right here, this, this birdie.blog one, right? Um, so I, I did a little bit of pre-thinking. Um, you'll notice there's a heart button for some of these here. If I press that button, that's going to save this provided that I'm logged into my WordPress.org account. And now if I head to favorites, dun, 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 
all of my favorite patterns that I have saved with that heart button up here right there. So um, as far as headers go, I think, let's see, which one did I like? This one is speaking to me. So is this one. I, th I think I like this one a little bit better. But there's a couple of things I want to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to make two separate headers. Um, just because I really like this big header, but I don't necessarily want it on every single poster page um, that I create, right? Like I would like something a little different. I would like the header to look more like this. So you're going to watch me just kind of do that real quick. So what I'm going to do, I'm in my header template part, which you can tell because it says this right up here. I am going to take this group and I'm going to remove it. A little scary, right? <laughs> but now, where did that go? I'm going to copy again. I can't remember if it's in my clipboard. I'm going to press control V. And now I have a header and it is already responsive. So you can see how that changed here. Now there's some extra stuff in here that I can also just kind of remove if I don't want it. So let's see, which group is that? I definitely want that. I'm using this tool right here, this list view. It's your best friend. Definitely don't want any of this right now. So I'm gonna remove this because this is just the top of my site. Um, and then at the bottom, looks like there's a little bit of spacing there. Don't really want that. I'm going to remove that as well. Um, but I think I just want, just for my, my header, the header that I want to appear on every page, my home page, my whatever else page, um, I am going to remove this one. I'm going to copy it first. And then I'm going to remove that group. Um, and so from here, um, it looks like they left a space for a logo. I think I'm going to change that to a site title. So... I wonder if I can just, no, oh, not that. I'm trying to find the transform button here. Oh, it really doesn't want me to. Can I change it here? All right, I'm going to remove this heading. Looks like that box is still there. I'm going to press this button here. And I'm going to look for my site title here. There it is. Now, I'm just going to save this. I'm going to mess with the colors at the end of all this. I highly recommend when you're switching from a classic to a block theme and you're rebuilding it um, to save the making it pretty for the very end. Just get that structure. Oh, let's see. I'm just double checking. Let's see if the pattern's been vetted. Have they been reviewed? Like what we have used with themes. So we have to answer that question. Yes, the patterns that you see um, over here. Um, these have all been submitted by contributors. They have all been approved. They have all been reviewed. And also um, maybe just I want to point out one one other cool thing, which is that this same pattern directory is available within the editor itself. If you go to browse all, um, click the plus at the top left. Oh, the inserter here. Oh, pattern. so they're right there. Yeah, click explore. Yeah. Ooh, fascinating. Solve. There, it's all so there's different ways to get it at them. Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. Okay. Yeah. So, why did my, my mouse is doing that again? It's doing the thing. I've got, I just purchased a new mouse because it keeps doing this stuff to me. Oh. All right. Let me see if I can fix this. Nope. It's not going to. All right. So I am now going to head to my dashboard. Try this again. What's going on when you see it get big like that is that I have a magic mouse and my finger slips and sometimes makes it big and I can never quite figure out how to make it small. Like I should really work on that. But if I head back into it, there we go. Now you can see that header now exists on my front page. So I'm going to do a little bit of template part inception. So there's one header here. This should appear on every template that I use. Just to get it a little bit closer, I'm going to do better large because on my home page I want something slightly different uh, and there are many ways that you can do this but this is going to be a header template so one thing that's kind of cool about block themes you can add a header inside of a header so I can choose my existing template part and beneath that insert after let's see if it's still copied ho ho it is <laughs> um, I now have that big image here um, I'm going to remove this text for right now 
remove paragraph. Definitely don't need these buttons here. I am going to remove buttons. And this is a good opportunity to talk about content. So I'm in the site editor right now. Um, it can be really tempting to do things like write my tagline here, right? So what you need to know about parent ownership. However, if I switch to another theme, classic or block, if I just use a paragraph block here, this content, anything that I write in the site editor will not transfer over. Um, and that's something that's really important to know about block themes. Um, it's important to try and use, um, what are they called? Theme blocks as much as possible. So I'm gonna write, insert after here, not insert after. This is not as accessible as I wish that it was. So I am just going to add a quick filter, maybe. Oh. Sorry, I'm just trying to make it so that everybody can see it. That's very important to me. There we go, okay. So I'm gonna change this picture to a picture of a parrot. But first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a theme block. So I can do that by clicking my site tagline. I'm just gonna make it white so everybody can see it. And now you can see what you actually need to know about living with parrots. Now, if I change my theme, um, I will be able to, uh, that that will move. So if another theme does have an already pre-programmed uh, tagline in there, I'm not gonna lose my content there. So I'm just going to center this, I'm going to save it, and I'm not gonna worry about how it looks yet. <sighs> I'm gonna double check in the chat to see where we're, how we are, where we're doing. Let's see here. Don had a question about the premise that the block editor is WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get uh, and should match the front end. And yeah, that's the idea. So you, you asked, uh, what if I don't want that? I'm not quite sure. Oh, a use case, a list of available colors for a product in a checkbox in the editor and an unordered list on the front end. I feel like that would probably be something you would need a plugin for. I don't know that that's, yeah, right now in. yeah, right now there's no forms that I can think of in the editor. Um, so yeah, I mean the the I think the point of this the site editor is to give people a better idea of what this thing's going to look like in the front end. I think it's one of the biggest mm -hmm. complaints of people with uh, in the past has been that you know you're in a completely separate looking space, and when you look at your you know you have to preview it, look at it in another window or tab. And um, that's something the site editor is designed to try and solve. And I'm, I'm not quite sure about your use case, but. Yeah, I think for that use case, you'd probably want to plug in if it exists to, to do something like that. Um, but let's see what this looks like now on the front end. So if I go, um, I haven't, oh, I didn't actually change the, <laughs> I didn't actually change the main template, it's still using my old header. So for this template, I decide that I want to, yes, this is what I want to work on. Let's try that. Um, I decide that I want to use a different header because right now it's just using the standard page header. I'm going to remove this header, oh, insert before. And now I am going to pull this header large that I just created. There it is. I know I can change this image pretty quickly here. Um, and now we can see it on my sample website. So yeah, it's very much what you see is what you get. So this is getting a little bit closer um, to what we wanted. Um, I One thing that Catherine had mentioned earlier was that on my normal website, again, it hasn't changed, was that we've got this, this sticky header up here. Yeah. Do you want me to try and make it stick to the top like that? <laughs> didn't have the Why opportunity. Why not? Live dangerously. Let's see. I didn't have the opportunity to test that. So what I, what I want to do here is I want to head to this template part and I want, I'm going to just edit this header because, because I put this header in here, this is that template part. We have a header template part inside of another header template part. Any change that I make here will also be applied to that header large that I made. So according to Catherine's directions, we need it in a group. It's already in a group. I'm going to click it. And then do I have the option? So on the right, scroll down in that panel, 
And do you have um, Gutenberg 15.1.1 no. active? Okay, do so not. this is a feature that's going to come out in the next version of Gutenberg or in the current version of Gutenberg, and it'll be in 6.2. So if you want to use it, you do. You will need to activate <laughs> it. It's more of a something coming up. And I think that's a really good point that you make. Just because something isn't necessarily possible in the current version of WordPress doesn't mean they're not working to make that possible. There's been a lot of requests for sticky, sticky headers, <laughs> sticky nav. So it'll yes. Be fun. All right. So now I'm just going to do the same thing. My footer. I'm just going to remove it. That's super simple. Um, what do I currently have? Let's take a look. Uh, it looks like I have updates, tags, and maybe a translate button. I think I would need a different plugin for that. But let's see. Um, am I able to access what I saved in here? I don't think so. Okay, so that might be a reason to use this wordpress.org slash patterns here. I don't think that it automatically translates. This is my wordpress.org account. This is my pressable account. So I don't know that the two are necessarily linked. So let's see what I saved here. These are my favorites. Um, I'm just going to copy this one for right now. And again, we're going to edit it at the end. For right now, we're going to save this. And this is something that I think is interesting with Pressable that I've noticed is that it didn't get any bigger when I did this. So that might be a host thing. I did not ever, I've never had this problem with local before. So that might be a bug that I need to report, but I'm going to refresh it. This is my workaround. Okay, boom. I even have a bird footer now. And now if I look at my templates... You can see my homepage here. Oh, this isn't my homepage though, is it? Oh, I think. One thing to know is that some of your templates may have different things. So for example, right now my homepage is what I think is currently displaying on the front. So um, you can see that got added down here. And now I'm gonna use some patterns to kind of set up the, the structure of my site. I'm gonna do this really fast. It is 534. I wanna get to the ideas about like adding color and making it pretty and things like that. But now I'm going to take this main group here in between my header and my footer, and I'm going to remove it. Dun, dun, dun. I insert this after just really quick. And I'm going to head back to my favorite patterns here. Um, so one of the things that I struggled with was I, I wasn't quite sure how to get this like image on the right stuff on the left. So somebody else may have been able to do that. I thought that I saved one of those but I guess that I did not. So I'm going to go over here to posts, which is, I need to go to all patterns. Let's look at posts here. We're going to just grab a query loop. I'm just going to see if I can find something that is similar to that for now. Don't actually see one though. Okay, all, let me look for query loop. So the way that your, your posts are described, the way that your posts are displayed are through query loops with the site editor. So I spelled it wrong. There's a space there. Oh, come now. I knew that there was a block pattern for this. What? Okay. That's what I get for not clicking the favorite button. Um, so I can definitely look through this um, to find things that I'd like. So what, one concern with this is just that I might grab something that isn't actually using the query loops. Um, like this to me, this effective solutions looks like it might be text rather than a photo gallery. Let me try one more thing. I found one earlier, y'all. <laughs> My best laid plans. This happens sometimes. Okay, we're getting there, getting closer. All right, I am going to grab... Laura says, try just the word post, maybe. See what happens. Mm -hmm. There's some more. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so here's one that is really close to that, right? It's a lot smaller. It's a little bit less overwhelming. So I may just, I may pick this one to kind of get a similar look and feel here, um, just to kind of show you how this will go. So now here we are in my paragraph. I copied it. I pasted it. Beautiful. Let me double check and make sure that that is a query loop by using my list view here. I see some columns, some columns. Oh no, it's media and text. Ooh. So this would be a way to do this in a way where I had fixed ones, but this, I need a query loop here. So I'm going to speed ahead a little bit just because again, it does take time to move things over. 
So the other thing I can do is insert after, I am just gonna search for a query loop. And for right now, just for the sake of showing you this, um, because I don't want this to be an in instruction on just how to use the site editor, um, I'm gonna just choose a new query loop, um, new option here. Oh, hey, this is almost right. If I put this in two columns, I might be able to do that. That might be interesting. Okay. But I do like the way that we have the image on the left, text on the right. So I'm going to save this for now. And you're just going to go through that template part by template part for everything that you need. So um, my, do I have a post page? Oh, this does not have a single page. Oh, wait, blog alternative. Hmm. So normally uh, sites will use the template single for post page, but I think, oh, it's right there in front of me. So this is how blog posts are showing on my site right now. Um, and you're just gonna go through template by template. We can definitely move things around, put them into patterns, things like that. Um, but I think the key takeaway here is just to know that you can use patterns, you can play with these things um, until you get them, them right. Um, what time is it? It is 5.38. I'm going to pause here. Do we have any questions that I should answer at the moment? I don't know if you heard my bird whistling in the background or not. <laughs> um... Okay, cool. Looks like Catherine's answered those questions. So once I have the overall structure of my site done, I can move this around, I can play with it. Um, we definitely have a lot of resources um, on uh, advanced layouts or whatever. Again, you can use the patterns that are available to you. Um, but once you start to get the structure right, um, it's time to style your site. And there are some, some kind of gotchas in here that I want to talk about just because I am using a lot of patterns. I am using, um, I have pulled things from out. So when it comes to stylizing your site, generally speaking, you want to use your global styles as much as possible. And the beauty of global styles is that you should be able to select a color, a size, a padding option once, and it should be applied to every block that's in there. So um, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to, part of the reason I picked 2023 is that uh, it introduced a new option here, which is styles. And this allows you to change the look and feel of your website with a click of a button. Um, and these are made by designers. Uh, kind of depends on what you're going for, um, but you can definitely start out with many block themes, um, and there will be more and more in the future uh, where it will change the overall look and feel of a lot of your site. Um, so I'm going to pick maybe this one. This one feels kind of like parchment paper, um, but you might have noticed that, for example, this footer, the color down here isn't changing. Some things are in it, uh, but for whatever reason, it's still purple. So when you're switching from a classic to a block theme and you are using patterns, um, you're going to have some sticky stuff here. So knowing where to go to find it, super useful. So when it sticks like this, there are two places it can be. Um, the first is in the settings for this particular block. So I'm going to use my list view and I'm going to look at this footer. Now note that if you're using a template part, which is indicated by um, this, uh, this kind of work, what is it, like a frames type icon here, this is going to apply to every template that uses this footer. So if you get confused like I do, it can be a good idea to head to template parts and just edit it there. But I know using this list view, I'm editing this footer, the changes that I make here are going to apply to everything. So now that this has been selected, um, I generally use my list view to kind of click around. Um, just because something that might be like on a button may not be an option for something else. So like if I'm just randomly clicking, you'll notice that like, I don't know where that color is. It's this top column here that's saying, hey, this background, let's make it purple to make it match. So that anytime I make a big global change on my website using this global styles here, I need to remove this. So there is a way to do that. I guess I could just make it transparent. That seems odd. There's normally a button here. Isn't there a button here to remove that? 
Interesting. Okay. <laughs> I'm used to there being a button for now. I'm going to make it transparent so that anytime I make a change that that will, that will happen. I also want my text to, oh, you just click it again. There it goes. Ha ha. So click, click. It's now off. See that, that block pattern there, that means it's transparent. I'm going to save this. And now if I go over here and I pick a different style or I change the different colors of my websites, that should change as well. So that's the first place um, where some of these things can be. Um, I'm going to double check this button here. Um, I think that this is probably in a setting as well. And that's part of the reason that I implore you to make as many changes as you, as you can using global styles. If you want to rebrand quickly, um, doing that here makes it so that a click of a button changes that. Um, if you do a lot of settings, which is what I did when I first got started, uh, you end up having to change things block by individual block. So here, this background has been set in the settings. Um, I am just going to turn that off. So I just clicked a button, turned it off, and now that will change as well. So I've, I've cleared this out as evidenced by this circle here. Okay, I'm going to pause, double check. Okay, I think we're okay so far. So this is getting a little bit closer. Um, at some point, I'm going to put this type of query loop into two columns here. I'm not going to do that yet, but I want to talk about one other place where if you're like, hey, like something about this is sticking and I'm not sure why. Um, let's take the site title, for example. So here I'm working in my header. Any change that I make within that template part will be applied globally. Um, I'm going to expand this to find what I'm looking for. I've got some buttons here that I'm going to change. Okay. So this site title, let's say in my global styles, I want all of my headings to be, I want them to be a different font. So you'll notice that all of my headings up here are changing, right? That is really exciting. So I'm going to pick a different one. You can see the difference there. I'm going to save this. If you were to make this change and you would notice something like your site title, which is a type of heading, hasn't changed, the other place to look as you're migrating um, is in these blocks here. So I'm in global styles. I click on blocks. I can look specifically for the site title block. And I can find that there. And you'll notice that in many block themes, but not all, um, I do have a typography option here. If you're following this tutorial, you're over here in your site title, you're not seeing a typography button. There's probably a setting that's not on in your theme.json. So you might have to add some code there. But if you're using 2023, um, I can say, hey, I want my site heading to be something different. I can do that. Let's say I want to make it, maybe not X large. That doesn't look very pretty on mobile. <laughs> Let's say I want it to be extra bold. Um, I can save that. And now anytime I head to my global styles here, I can change every other heading to a different font, but you'll notice that one isn't changing anymore. And it's because it is set at the block level. So that's one gotcha that had me absolutely tearing my hair out. So I hope that it helps you to discover this. Um, so Anne just asked me, am I going to save all of these modifications into a child theme? That is a fantastic question. So the WordPress site editor is a little different in that you don't need to make child themes the same way that you did for classic themes. So for those of you who are new to this, um, if you were to make changes at the code level, um, um, if you were to go into the PHP file here and make the change there, um, anytime somebody updated the uh, the theme. So if they wanted to, for example, add more styles, they want to add more features that come out with 6.2 to their theme. Um, those changes would be overwritten unless you created a separate child theme. The WordPress site editor is different in that if you head to your templates, you'll notice some of these have a little blue dot. This means that this template has been customized by me, the person, and the changes that I make, the selections that I make, in the site editor um, will be copied over. So even if they add even more styles here, what I have chosen in the site editor here will be preserved. 
So these changes are being saved in the database, as Catherine wrote in the chat, um, and the files are not being changed. Basically, I am adding stuff on top of it. So even if the underlying picture changes, <laughs> um, these changes stay on top. So it's a really cool feature um, as far as uh, block themes go. Great, great question. Ah, I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to head back uh, to, unless there are any questions about that so far. Are we good so far? I know we've had. And Catherine did mention um, there is a create block theme plugin that allows you to save changes as a child theme, but I won't need to do that. So we talked about using primarily global styles, um, which is this button up here. Um, it looks like a half moon. Do be aware that was 6.2 coming out in March sometime. Can't remember the exact date. These may change a little bit. So just be aware of that if you are watching this recording later or you go in to edit this and 6.2 has been released and you've updated, some things are going to, to shift a little bit here. Um, so you can use some settings, but you definitely want to try to use them sparingly. So for example, um, I'm going to select this that was an odd blip. I wonder if that was my computer. So for example, um, in this header, I used a cover block here. Um, I think these are settings. Yeah. These, these are not, these are not global styles. So these are settings. Let's say that the image that I pick, it's got my media library and let's pick Wow, I'm seeing some very interesting things with this one. Let's say that the image that I pick um, is just not particularly accessible. You can't read the text here. It's not, it's not looking great. I don't like that. Um, I know that I'm only going to use this cover block here in this heading. It's already set. I'm never going to have to like really change that again. That might be a use case to change these settings. So for uh yeah, so for example, with the site tagline, I could go over here. I could say, hey, I want to make sure that everybody can read this, even though Louis is very handsome. Um, and I can make that change there. So that is one instance where you might use a setting, just knowing, hey, I'm never going to do this again, most likely. I don't need to make this, I don't need to allow this to change. I want to make sure I can always read this text here. That might be a good option. Um, yeah, so that, that might be one example. The other thing I could do here, and again, the thing with WordPress is there are so many ways to do the same thing. I could also potentially head down to blocks here and look for my tagline. And I might be able to style that here. So I might be able to change the background. Now you might notice that I came here to my global styles and this color isn't changing. So that is because whatever you put in settings here goes right on top. <laughs> Of what's on on your global styles so it's just it's really important to know that as you are designing so i'm going to turn this off now i'm going to change this text color so that it is off as well so if you do want to use your global styles these individual block settings can be really helpful so if i go here and say hey anytime i use a site tagline let's say i want to use it in my footer and and up here um i can select the colors here change that background and maybe change that text to another color so that it is readable. Uh oh, my text, it's sticking. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm showing you this right now. It must be in the settings, let's find out. Oh, but it's not, fascinating. I wonder if this is a paragraph thing. So this might be set somewhere else, let's find out. No, I don't know why it's sticking there. Interesting. So when all else fails, I can go back to my settings and say, hey, I'm going to over, <laughs> I'm going to override this. There's my text. Easy peasy. There it is. Okay. And then a great question was asked, do these patterns that other people have made come with responsiveness built in? All blocks are responsive to some degree. Catherine is totally right. Um, since patterns use blocks, they should be responsive. It's a good idea to test things out, though, um, especially if you're designing just on your own, uh, just because some things will stack, some things will not. But you can kind of see the difference. Like this is what this would look like um, on a probably a mobile phone, right? Whereas if I make it a little wider, maybe on a tablet, it might look a little bit more like that. 
um, and, and testing it on, on different screen sizes. WordPress is getting better and better with every new um, every new release. So you might find that certain things aren't as responsive or do really strange things. Um, so for example, sometimes like the text will rather than be wide, it'll go into like a single column if it gets small enough. Um, there are ways around it, but you're going to have to dig around in the settings a little bit. Whew, okay. So I'm going to continue to work on this website. And again, it does take some time. It does take some elbow grease to, to really um, get a sense of how this works and why it works. Um, but I don't have to go live uh, on my other website until I am ready. So at some point when this website uh, looks, not this one, this website looks the way that I really want it to. I'm happy with it. I've redesigned it. I have the control that I want and all the features in there. Um, I can change my name servers so that birdie.blog shows this website over here, this birdie.blog.mystagingwebsite.com. Um, and that is the way that I would recommend doing that. Um, so yeah, let, let's uh, go to the correct slide here. Mm -hmm. We talked about these. Um, so, and because I'm doing this on a separate website um, and not just changing my birdie.blog website, um, I can definitely add some plugins and anticipate issues here in a safe spot. Um, not all plugins are compatible with block themes. Many are racing to catch up to make sure that they are, because again, they, they do see this as kind of the future um, of WordPress. So, certain plugins will be used more successfully than others. Oh, and there is not a beautiful sunset. That's just my background. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> um, so I'm just curious, are there any plugins you'd recommend that you've used successfully with block themes? Um, are there any plugins that you've used unsuccessfully? Just curious if you've, if you've seen anything like that. seeing any responses yet, but that's okay. Um, but I will say that um, it can be time consuming to move from a classic to a block theme, especially if you have a lot of complex plugins. A um, if you have, uh, <laughs> as in my case, lots of enormous images that I should have optimized <laughs> for my website. Um, so there is probably a, a pretty big opening in the field um, of, of migrating themes from a classic to a block theme. Um, for different things. So if you can really experiment with this, really play with this, like I, I feel like this is one way that you could definitely make a living um, by, by switching this over. So <sighs> let's see. Some of the form plugins um, have not been working. So I that's new to me. I've not experimented with that. I know there were some questions about that earlier. Um, I know that Catherine, you said earlier that short codes generally work pretty well because you can use a short code block. So if I'm editing a page, I have a plugin that uses a short code. Let me just add one underneath this, uh, insert after. Um, there is a short code inputter. So I could definitely write a short code here and it should display properly. Um, and uh, another person, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna, yeah. You're probably answering the question about Elementor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to talk go about for that. It. Go for it. Um, so as far as do block themes work with Elementor? So you may be watching this and going, hey, I didn't see anything that looks like this in my theme. I, If I go and edit my site here, I don't actually see, uh, what is it, the customizer, appearance customizer. You might be seeing something totally different. And if you are seeing something totally different from what you see here or what you saw in this workspace, I wonder why that's, oh, that's an advertisement, that's fine. <laughs> um, if you're seeing something totally different, you may be using a site builder such as Elementor, such as Divi, Beaver Builder. Um, there are all kinds, of WP Bakery out there. Um, and I feel like a lot of those really <sighs> fulfilled the need that that WordPress has needed to fill all this time, right? They were allowing you to, to make pages um, in a more drag and drop sort of way with WordPress. So they don't necessarily work together. You may have to 
migrate from one to another. Um, some may have more advanced features that aren't quite in WordPress core yet. So there are, you know, benefits to using some, but um, it's generally not, as far as I'm aware, someone correct me if I'm wrong, it's generally really hard to use both what you see in the site editor with a page builder. The page builder usually goes right on top of the site editor and, and overrides a lot of what it does. So yeah, let's uh, let's start wrapping up. This one, I think, so add plugins here. You can anticipate issues. Um, and from now you're going to Paulus and Finestra's site. It is important to know you may um, encounter some migration issues. Um, I had some import issues. Um, I had size issues. It's just important to know that if you, if I wanted to take, you know, what I'm doing over here in my staging website and try and move it to my existing host, you might have migration issues. So I do think that one of the best ways to move from a classic to a block theme is to set up another installation and do that there and then change the name servers so that, yeah. So that would be my recommendation. Is it the only way to do it? No. Is it a way that I would do it with way more confidence than just heading over to my birdie.blog website and just switching over? Yeah. Because people do actually come to this website to learn about specifically Eclectus Mojo Molds. Very niche subject, only for people who have Ekis. Um, but yeah, so we talked about that. So, and the last thing that I'm going to do, I need to change my name servers. I need a 301 redirect. We're not going to get into that. Um, I will probably have to migrate my followers because I'm moving from WordPress.com um, to Pressable. Things I can do. Um, but the key points that I really want you to walk away with today are if you don't do anything else, you just want to go, <laughs> go forward and change your website, please make sure that you back up your website. Without a backup earlier today, um, my website would have been in a state of disarray and it would have been uh, very tragic for me <laughs> as the site owner. Um, I also recommend practicing with the site editor. Um, Y'all were mostly uh, more advanced users today, so you know this. Um, definitely check your plugins, make sure that they support block themes before you switch, test them, and do know that this process can take some time, but with the right planning, the right effort, the mindset, you can switch themes efficiently with, with no downtime there. Ah, so with our last minute left, are there any final takeaways? Let's see. Laura has made a great point. Um, she, the developers have listened to a lot of the comments that have been made by users and they've added a lot of really cool stuff in 6.2. So if you're working with this now and you get frustrated and you're like, hey, this isn't working, it's not possible to do yet, that is the key word, yet. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> All right, for more tutorials, online workshops and courses, please visit learn.wordpress.org. We really appreciate your time today. Cheers, y'all.